Hello and welcome from Stretton Vale Baptist Church. The day has finally arrived. Christmas is here. Over the last four weeks we have been waiting for Christmas to come as we go through the Advent season and finally the day has arrived and we'll be relighting all of our Advent candles including the one in the middle to re represent Christ. But before we go any further let's just pray as we come before God. Well, we proclaim your greatness, O God, and rejoice in you. We will not trust in the powerful of this world, but we will trust in you, creator of heaven and earth, the one who gives food to the hungry and enacts justice for the oppressed, the one who sets captives free and gives sight to the blind. We proclaim your greatness, O God. And as we light these candles in love, hope, peace and joy, we celebrate your coming on this precious day. Amen. And so as I, I prayed, we will be lighting the Christmas candles, lighting all four of the Advent candles and then the Christ candle in the middle. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you that today is the day we celebrate the birth of your Son, of Jesus Christ coming into the world and bringing us hope and joy, love and peace, a chance at salvation. God, we worship you. And we pray that you would speak with us today. Amen. I've got a, a poem, I guess, um, that I found um, written by Christine Jarrett. Um, and it's just a lovely little poem. It says this. God is telling a story in our lives. It's quite a story. Full of the promises God makes and our struggles to trust. Full of mystery and angels with surprising news. Full of hard endings and unexpected new beginnings. Come, hear the story. Pay attention to the angel's message in your heart, in this place and time. Then join all creation in worshipping the God who tells it full of grace and truth, who comes in Jesus, the word made flesh, and makes our story holy. I like that uh, poem because it reminds us that God's story is our story, because he invites us to join his story, and that's amazing. I'm aware that Christmas feels very strange and difficult this year. We have all had expectations of gathering with friends and family and the reality of our situation is probably far from what we expected. We normally have lots of different expectations and plans on how the Christmas season is going to be spent with family gatherings and games and feasts and laughter. We often paint an idealised picture of what Christmas should look like. And this Christmas is unlike any other Christmas we've ever had. This sense, this sense of reality turning out differently to what was expected is actually a common experience found within the Christmas story. The Jewish people had an expectation of what this Messiah would be like 
and how he would come. Mary and Joseph had many different expectations for the way their life would run. And yet all of these expectations did not play out how they expected. The way God planned it to work was very different from human expectations. So as I said, the Jewish people had expectations of what the Messiah would be like. The coming of the Messiah had been foretold for centuries. And Jewish people had many different expectations. And this was especially the case as Israel went through various different occupations with rulers oppressing their lives. And so for many, the Messiah would be a military figure who would come to conquer against all the enemies they were facing and would raise the people up to a place of prominence in the world. One of the passages that speaks of the coming Messiah is in Micah 5 verse 2 and it says, But you Bethlehem Ephrath, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. The Messiah would be one, would be a ruler over Israel. Another passage in Isaiah speaks of the messenger as a wonderful counsellor, um, speaks as the, of the Messiah as a wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. This would be the ruler, the Messiah, that Israel were expecting. And so it is understandable that the Jewish nation would not have expected the Messiah to come as a fragile baby, born to a poor peasant family, and had to be laid in a manger because there was no room for them elsewhere. Surely the Messiah should have been born in a palace, or perhaps to a military or noble family. Someone that could teach and raise the boy to become a mighty figure that would lead a conquering army or raise a rebellion. The idea that the Messiah could come as a seemingly ordinary child in a seemingly ordinary family seems ridiculous. And yet this is the reality. Jesus, the Messiah, really was born to Mary and he was laid to rest in a manger. In Matthew 1 verses 18 to 25 we are told of how the birth of Jesus came about. It says this, This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When jo Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Mary and Joseph also had expectations about what their life would look like. They were just an ordinary couple, couple betrothed to marry one another. They would have had hopes and dreams about what their life would look like. They would have had plans to start a family, but once they were married and once they had come together, 
but their expectations were blown away completely with the news that Mary was going to give birth to Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, their ordinary lives had changed dramatically. And of course, even the birth itself didn't go according to plan. First, instead of staying settled in their home in Nazareth, they had to travel many miles to Bethlehem because the Roman rulers had called for a census. They had to travel away from all that they knew and their home country. We are not told many details in the story, but it seems possible that they would not have had many of their friends and family around to help with the birth. And then when they get to Bethlehem, they find it's already packed full of other people who had arrived for the census. There was no room for them. They were forced to place Jesus in a manger, which is just an animal's feeding trough. It would seem that nothing was going according to plan. It's easy for us to get caught up in our own expectations about what Christmas should be like. Like many of you, I'm sure, I'm feeling just disappointed in the way that things have turned out this year. But we all need to remember the true Christmas spirit. Christmas is the celebration of the unexpected Jesus coming to an unexpected couple at an unexpected time, in an unexpected place, coming to pay that unbelievable cost to give us the unexpected and undeserved gift of love and complete forgiveness. Jesus, who is God, chose to become flesh for the sake of us. John 1 verses 1 to 5 and 14 to 15 puts it like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. God, the God who was there at the beginning of creation, the one who spoke and the word world was created. It is this God who chose to enter the world. It is this Lord of the universe who loves us so unconditionally. It is this light of the world who lights up our darkest nights. That first Christmas came as a surprise to all involved. It certainly came as a surprise to Mary and Joseph. The coming of the Messiah did not occur as people expected. God made an unexpected entry into the world and he is still here with us by the Holy Spirit. And so Christmas is not about our expectations for a large family gathering around an indulgent feast. Instead, it is about celebrating the wonderful gift of love and joy that is Jesus Christ. Even though things have not gone to plan this year, let us celebrate and rejoice in the God who reigns supreme over the unexpected. So let's pray. Messiah, King of King and Lord of Lords, we joyfully praise you, singing praises to you. We stand amazed at your presence with us. When we dreamed of the Messiah, we imagined power like that we see in the world. We believed you would come 
as a king with a sword in your hand, as a coming, as a proud hero, demonstrating your might. Yet you did not come into this world in a show of power, strength and glory. You came as a child, born in a manger. Your arrival noted only by a few. Lord, we celebrate that your love, your hope, your peace and your joy shines in the darkness of this world. But we also wait for you to banish the shadows of this world completely and guide all people back to you. We long for you to return and make all things new. Open our hearts, merciful God, to your presence still in this world. Open our eyes that we might see you and your presence in the least likely of places and among the least likely of people. God with us, Emmanuel, fan into flame your spirit within us, that we may shine your light, that because of you we might banish the shadows of this world and be the continuation of the Christmas miracle. Emmanuel is in this world. God is with us, now and forevermore. Amen.